connecting LiftMaster Next Generation Garage Door Openers to the MyQ app with MyQ Diagnostics is your key to maintaining a strong relationship with your customer once you finish the initial setup. Let's walk through installing and connecting a belt drive garage door opener. This demonstration breaks down the process into several steps. Preparation, hardware assembly and installation, and getting connected with MyQ Diagnostics. This video is intended for demonstration purposes only. Please consult the manual for complete instructions and safety information. Before you head out to install the garage door opener, there are a few things you'll need to prepare. To set up MyQ, ask the homeowner to have their cell phone or mobile device available on the day of installation. They will also need the password for their Wi-Fi network. You will need the last five digits of your dealer external ID to provide your customer a digital sticker for future service calls. You'll find your dealer external ID on your account profile when you log in to the partner portal and go to partner.liftmaster.com slash my dash account. If you need assistance obtaining your ID, send an email to diagnostics at chamberlain.com or contact your sales rep or customer care. Rail assemblies for belt drive operators are available in 7, 8, and 10 foot lengths. Have the homeowner measure the height of the garage door. Having this information in advance will allow you to take the right rail to the site, avoiding unnecessary extra trips. When you arrive at the site, check the balance of the garage door. Start with the garage door in the closed position. Lift the door 3 to 4 feet off the ground. Release the door. If balanced, it should stay in place, supported entirely by its springs. Raise and lower the door to check for sticking or binding. If the door binds, sticks, or is out of balance, it will need to be serviced before you install the opener. Check for horizontal and vertical reinforcements. These provide support and help prevent damage to the door. If reinforcements are not in place, install them before installing the opener. Let's move on to assembly and installation. The motor unit with accessories and hardware are in a separate carton from the rail assembly. Lay out the parts and then rest the motor unit on packaging material so it doesn't get scratched. Here's what comes in the box with this model of opener. Your model may include different accessories. The motor unit, the safety reversing sensors with mounting brackets, the header bracket and door mounting bracket, the control panel, the keypad, remote controls, the sprocket cover, the battery, the hardware bag and door control wire, the curved door arm, and the user guide. Be sure to leave the user guide for the homeowner. To open the rail assembly packaging, pull the tabs to the end of the box. Remove the straight door arm and dispose of the foam packing inserts that are attached to the rail. Cut off the zip ties before assembly. The rail assembly carton contains a T-rail with the belt and trolley already included. It also includes the straight door arm. The support bracket for mounting the motor unit to the ceiling is not provided. Place the garage door opener about 10 feet away from the garage door. Place one end of the rail on top of packing material and the other end on top of the motor unit. The belt needs to be loosened before you attach the rail to the motor unit. Unscrew the spring trolley nut to release the belt. Remove the bolts from the top of the motor unit and use them to attach the rail to the chassis of the garage door opener. Hand tighten the bolts. Do not use power tools. Wrap the belt around the sprocket. Make sure the belt is not twisted 
and the ribbed side is in contact with the sprocket. Put the threaded bolt through the trolley. Secure in place by finger tightening the spring trolley nut. The belt should be about a quarter inch above the bottom of the rail. To set the spring, insert a flathead screwdriver against the nut ring slot and turn the nut with a wrench until the spring releases and snaps the nut ring against the trolley. Complete the assembly by installing the sprocket cover. The garage door opener is ready to install. The header bracket will be centered over the garage door and fastened to a structural support. Do not attach the header bracket over drywall. If there is a header bracket already properly installed, use it if possible. Raise the garage door to the highest point of travel and make a mark two inches above this. Using a level is helpful. With the door closed, place the bottom of the header bracket on your mark and make marks for pilot holes. Be sure to refer to the installation instructions for the correct drill bit size. Install the header bracket using the provided hardware. It's time to place the assembled garage door opener into position. You may find it easier to have a helper. Use a ladder to support the motor unit and a second ladder or step stool to reach the header bracket. Connect the rail to the header bracket using the clevis pin and secure in place with a ring. Open the garage door and place a 2x4 under the rail. This will put the motor unit at the proper height for connecting to the support bracket. If a properly installed support bracket is not already in place, you must supply one along with the hardware for fastening it to the structural supports in the ceiling. This garage already has support brackets installed. Measure the distance from the support bracket to the garage door opener. You will need to provide hanging brackets and hardware for connecting the garage door opener to the support bracket. Measure and cut the hanging bracket. Connect the hanging bracket to the garage door opener and the support bracket. Remove the 2x4 and lower the garage door. Make sure the emergency release rope is tied in a secure knot through the handle. Install the emergency release rope to the trolley, making sure the handle is at least six feet off the ground. Cut off the excess rope and carefully melt the end to prevent fraying. If the garage door is made of lightweight material, such as fiberglass, aluminum, or light steel, Make sure both horizontal and vertical reinforcements are installed before attaching the door bracket. The door bracket will be centered under the header bracket. It attaches to the vertical reinforcement on the top panel using the provided hardware. If there is a door bracket already properly installed, use that. The outer trolley needs to be close to the garage door so you can install the door arm. If you need to move it, Disconnect the trolley by pulling down and back on the emergency release handle until it locks in the released position. Then slide the trolley over to the door. The door arm consists of a curved section and a straight section. Use the provided clevis pins to connect the straight door arm to the trolley and the curved door arm to the door bracket. Align the curved and straight arms so they appear to be positioned between 1 and 2 o'clock. The bottom of the curved door arm should be parallel to the floor. Use the provided hardware to connect the two parts. Pull straight down on the emergency release rope. This will allow the trolley to re-engage. Let's take a moment to get familiar with the locations of some key features you'll need when installing next-generation garage door openers. The buttons for programming the opener are located behind this panel, which opens on the side. This is also where you'll find the connectors for wiring the safety reversing sensors and control panel. Wires route in through the space in the top. This label contains the MyQ serial number, which is used when connecting the opener connected to the home network. Open the panel on the other side of the opener. This label has the model number. 
This is also where you'll find the battery compartment in models that have battery backup. The garage door opener comes equipped with safety reversing sensors, which are to be mounted on each side of the garage door at floor level. Safety reversing sensors are to be installed no more than 6 inches from the floor. Snap the sensor bracket onto the door track. Each safety reversing sensor comes with a bolt and wing nut. Insert the bolt through the sensor, then attach to the bracket using the wing nut so that the lens is facing the opposite side of the door. This garage has existing wires for the safety reversing sensor. If the garage is not pre-wired, follow the instructions for routing the wires from the sensors to the motor unit. On the motor unit, open the door to access the wiring connectors. Route the wires through the opening in the top of the motor unit. Insert the white wire in the white connector and the black wire in the gray connector. Next, install the door control within sight of the door at a minimum height of 5 feet 1.5 meters above floors, landings, steps, or any other adjacent walking surface where small children cannot reach and away from the moving parts of the door. Follow the directions for connecting the wires to the door control and for mounting it to the wall. Route the door control through the hole in the top of the motor unit. Complete the wiring connections by inserting the white wire in the white connector and the red wire in the red connector. Plug the garage door opener into the electrical outlet, but do not run the opener. Now, check the safety reversing sensors. The sending sensor amber LED should be on solid. If the amber LED is off, make sure the garage door opener has power. Then, Make sure the wiring connection at the sensor and at the garage door opener is not broken or shorted. The receiving sensor's green LED should be on solid. If the receiving sensor green LED is off, make sure the wiring connection at the sensor and at the garage door opener is not broken or shorted. If the sensor is flashing, make sure there is nothing obstructing the sensor and make sure it is properly aligned. To align the sensor, loosen the wing nut and adjust the sensor position until the LED glows solid. Programming travel limits tells the opener where to stop when moving the door up or down. The buttons for programming travel are located next to the wiring connectors. Openers manufactured starting in 2022 have a step saver setup label. If your opener has this label, follow these steps. Otherwise, watch the section of the video for openers that do not have this label. There are three buttons you'll use. The up button, the down button, and the adjustment button. Press and hold the adjustment button until the up button begins to flash. The lights on the safety reversal sensors will turn off because they will be temporarily disconnected during programming. Now, press and hold the up button until the door is in the desired up or open position. To prevent damage to vehicles, be sure the fully open door provides adequate clearance. Once the door is in the fully open position, press and release the adjustment button. The garage door opener lights will flash twice and the down button will start flashing. Now, press and hold the down button until the door is in the desired down or closed position. Once the door reaches the correct closed position, press and release the adjustment button. The garage door opener lights will flash twice. Programming travel is now complete. The safety reversal sensors will reconnect and their lights will turn back on. The opener will beep and the lights will flash when it enters a force sensing operation. The door will automatically open and close. Then, the opener will beep three times, letting you know the force setting is complete. If the garage door opener lights flash five times, then programming has timed out 
and travel limits have not been set. You'll need to restart the process again. For products that do not have the Step Saver Setup label, follow these steps. Press and hold the Adjustment button until the Up button begins to flash. Now, press and hold the Up button until the door is in the desired Up or Open position. To prevent damage to vehicles, be sure the fully open door provides adequate clearance. Once the door is in the fully open position, press and release the adjustment button. The garage door opener lights will flash twice and the down button will start flashing. Now press and hold the down button until the door is in the desired down or close position. Once the door reaches the correct close position, press and release the adjustment button. The garage door opener lights will flash twice and the up button will begin to flash. Now, press and release the up button. When the door travels to the open position, the down button will begin to flash. Press and release the down button. The door will travel to the close position. Programming the travel for your garage opener is now complete. Anytime you make any adjustments, the safety reversal system must be tested. To test the protector system, open the garage door. Place an object that is at least 12 inches high, such as a box, in the path of the garage door so that it obstructs the safety sensor. Use the remote control or control panel to try to close the garage door. The door will not close and the garage door opener lights will flash 10 times. When a safety sensor is obstructed or misaligned, the green LED will flash. You must test the safety reversal system after making any adjustments to the garage door opener. Advise the homeowner that they must test the safety reversal system every month. The door must reverse on contact with a 1.5 inch high object or a 2x4 laid flat on the floor. To test the safety reversal system, open the garage door. With the door fully open, place a 1.5 inch board or a 2x4 laid flat on the floor, centered under the garage door. Press the remote control or control panel to close the door. The door should stop and reverse upon contact with the board. The door will return to the fully open position. The opener will beep and the lights will flash slowly five times. If the door stops and does not reverse, check that your garage door opener is installed properly. Refer to the manual for detailed instructions. Here are some key installation points to check to ensure your system successfully passes the safety reversal test. 1. Verify the garage door is properly reinforced. Some garage doors may have pre-installed reinforcement, which can be verified by contacting the door manufacturer. 2. Verify the header and door brackets are installed in the proper location. Verify the curved and straight arm are assembled correctly. If everything is installed properly, it may be necessary to increase the down travel in order to get a properly reversing safety system. Go back and watch the Travel Adjustment section of this video again or consult the manual. After adjusting the travel, you'll need to perform the safety reversal test again. If the garage door opener continues to fail the safety reversal test, the door needs to be serviced. It's time to install the battery. Always wear safety glasses and gloves when handling the battery. Open the panel. Locate the red and black wires. Connect the red wire to the red connector on the battery. Connect the black wire to the black connector on the battery. Close the panel. On the other side of the opener, open the compartment. The battery status LED is located next to the yellow Learn button. As your battery charges, the light will flash green. When the battery is fully charged, the light will be solid green. It's time to complete the setup by getting connected to MyQ. You'll need the homeowner to complete this part of the setup. We'll show you how to add the opener in the MyQ app, add the camera in the MyQ app, and 
add your digital sticker in the MyQ app so you'll be set up for future service calls using MyQ Diagnostics. Have the homeowner grab their mobile device. Turn on Wi-Fi and check for a strong signal where the garage door opener is located. Make sure the homeowner has the password for their Wi-Fi network. Enable Bluetooth on the mobile device. Enable location services on the mobile device. These steps will help both Apple and Android users. Some screens may appear slightly different. Go to the App Store or Google Play and search for MyQ. Several apps will appear. Choose the app called MyQ Garage and Access Control. Go ahead and install that one. If you have an older version of the MyQ app, update to the latest version. When you launch the app, you'll be prompted to either sign in or sign up for a MyQ account. Fill in and submit your information. New users will receive an email to complete registration. Follow the instructions in the email. Log into the account on the app. New users will be prompted to install a new device. Tap Garage Door Opener with Wi-Fi. Fill in the checkboxes. We have access to the garage door opener. We also have a strong Wi-Fi signal and our Wi-Fi password. And we've activated Bluetooth on the phone. Tap I'm Ready. Tap the control panel that looks like yours and follow the app instructions. We have the LCD control panel for this demonstration. Press Menu. Press the down arrow until Program is highlighted. Press the side arrow to select. With MyQ Wi-Fi Opener highlighted, press the side arrow to select. On the MyQ app, tap Next. You'll hear a beep from the garage door opener. Tap Next. When your garage door opener is discovered, the MyQ serial number will appear. Tap it to continue. After the app connects to the device, a list of available networks will appear. Find the homeowner's home network and tap to select it. Enter the network password. Tap the eye icon to make sure you've typed the password correctly. Tap Next. The garage door opener will beep once, then twice. You'll hear three beeps when the connection is successful. Give the garage door opener a name. Tap Next. Your garage door opener is now connected and ready to control using MyQ. Let's get the camera set up. In the MyQ app from the Devices screen, tap the plus sign. Tap Device. Tap Secure View. Your garage door opener will be listed. Tap it. You'll be reminded that you may need a ladder and about turning on Bluetooth and location services on your phone. Tap I'm ready. The camera is located on the underside of the garage door opener. Locate the notch and flip the camera down. The LED on the camera will start out white, then turn to blinking blue. Tap Next. When MyQ discovers your camera, it will appear in the app. Tap the listed camera. Now, MyQ will look for and connect to your home network. The LED on the camera will alternate flashing blue and green. Then, it will flash green. When the LED turns solid green, your camera is connected. Tap to receive an email with video subscription information. A subscription will allow you to record, view, and save videos for up to 7 or 30 days so you don't miss a thing. You'll see an important safety warning. Tap OK. Now that you've completed the installation, it's time to provide your homeowner with a digital sticker so you can help them maintain and service their opener. Have your My Dealer ID ready. If you don't know it, reach out to diagnostics at chamberlain.com or call your sales rep or customer care. Tap the user initials. Tap My Dealer. Tap Add a New Dealer. Tap Dealer ID. Enter the My Dealer ID. The digital sticker will appear showing the address and phone number for the dealer. Tap Add My Dealer. That's it. Now the homeowner can connect with you just by tapping your phone number. They can also share Diagnostics Health Reports directly to your Partner Portal dashboard, enabling faster service with the right tech, right tools, and right parts. For more information, visit partner.liftmaster.com. Congratulations on completing the installation.
Thank you for choosing LiftMaster.